Amazon has an insane amount of deal days now. And after reading a couple of tech articles out there on some sites that I visit, I was depressed to see that they had failed to find any actual deals that were at lowest price. So I endeavored today to do that a little bit myself. I have a website page that's written up and I also am getting a 9060 XT. So we will have a 16 gigabyte AMD GPU that I'll be using for testing and also producing some instructions around very shortly. As a matter of fact, it says arriving tomorrow. And these are at some of the best prices that we've ever seen. So definitely take a chance, check out the article linked in the description below. So the 9060 XT 16 gigabyte versions look like they are having a pretty big Big reduction in price for this sale day, most of them being at about $350. The prior history, which I validated and listed all of those in parentheses here from CCC, at $350, they do start to make sense as competitors for the 5060 Ti. So the one that I got here was actually the XFX Swift RX 960 XT. This is a three fan, two slot, one eight pin design. There was also a more compact one, the PowerColor Reaper RX, and that was two fan, two slot, and one eight pin. And definitely, if you're looking for something that is a compact size to fit inside a desktop, the power color looks like it would be a better option for that. It is a much more compact card. And from what I'm seeing on the 9060 XT, as far as the specifications, it doesn't look like these are gonna produce tremendous amounts of heat. Honestly, these don't look like they will. And of course, one of the things that I outline when I am in the article talking about these is their actual gigabytes per second of system bandwidth, very important for things like local AI tasking. The 9060 XT at 325 gigabytes a second is a little bit slower, I mean, actually a fair amount slower than the 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte. At its higher price, which was closer to, I believe, where its MSRP is, then it became less and less of a good deal. At 350, it actually becomes kind of compelling. Uh, I've got to be honest with you, I'm, I'm excited about getting the 9060 XT. I don't know if it will become the recommendation, but I definitely can tell you it will be fully tested and you will get to see all those tests and all of the results from it. And you can bet the 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte is going head to head against the 9060 XT. This XFX Swift is a three cooler design. So, I mean, I typically like to get that myself if I can fit it. There is a few things about these that, I mean, I would like one more display port and I know most people probably don't have that, but I actually do run four monitors just in this room, one, two, three, and four over there. So that is quite a few monitors that I run off of this at any given point in time. So I would only be able to run three if this becomes my daily driver. Now, moving on to, I think, a much less compelling, and we see 429 is the MSRP and the prices that we're seeing the cheapest for 5060 Ti 16 gigabyters are 418 and 420. That's for the Zotac Gaming 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte at 418 and the Gigabyte Windforce 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte at 420. And the system bandwidth, much different, much higher, 448 gigabytes a second. As I noted here, if you are trying to get into doing video generation, Please stick with CUDA for that, so you will have a much, much faster across the board experience based upon other reviews I've seen. Soon I'll be able to validate that with the 9060 XT, but from what I've seen out there of other people's reviews, definitely you wanna go CUDA for video generation. Almost all of the alternatives out there are incredibly slow. GDDR7, so faster RAM, and they are all PCIe 5. They are all eight pin. This does come with one extra display port. So I'm currently using a 5060 Ti as my daily driver in my AMD rig over there. And it does really good. I mean, for video editing, it does surprisingly well. The 4090 blows it out of the water, but for being able to do things like AV1 encoding, the 5060 Ti actually does a really, really good job. And the Zotac here is the other option. I don't know very much about Zotac, so let me know what you think about Zotac in the comments below. And there is one additional deal in GPUs that I found, and that is the 5070 Ti 16 gigabyte, which does have an impressive system bandwidth of 890 gigabytes a second. Now, seeing that at 850, that's still more expensive than a used 3090. So a used 3090 is still a really great option, but a lot of people don't want to buy a 3090. I don't agree with those concerns, but certainly I understand those concerns. And in that instance, if that sounds like you, a 5070 Ti 16 gigabyte would be a pretty great daily driver GPU. The ability for it to hit 890 gigabytes a second 
is really, really great. That's on par or close to on par. I think it's like 932 for the 3090 and for the 4090, you're at like 1.002 1 or something like that. And for the 5090, you're of course at 1.7. So that's that big step up. The step to the 4090 from the 3090 doesn't really make sense. But if you were looking for a brand new kind of class card, the 5070 Ti 16 gigabyte for a all-in-one daily driver kind of setup would for sure be a really great graphics card. As far as NVMe deals, so I found, I think, a pretty good deal. And this was 60 bucks, which is like five off where it had been in the past, of the Samsung 990 Evo plus one terabyter. And that's a really cool GP or uh, NVMe. Like, I, th I think, you know, it's, it's Gen 4, basically the speed of it, you're gonna cap out at 4x4. So you're gonna hit somewhere around 7.25. And I guess, you know, max theoretical would be about eight for that generation for Gen 4 NVMEs. Gen 5 NVMEs should be all the way up to 16. And you can see that the other one that I found was the Samsung SSD 9100 Pro 2 terabyte. Definitely, if you have Gen 5 or you're looking for just a one and done kind of NVMe, that one would be much better than the 990 Evo plus one terabyte. But I have so many machines and I've got tons of Gen 4 slots that are unfilled. And so I needed a couple more boot drives. Those will work great for that. I definitely have been impressed with the Peerless Assassin 120. It is a great CPU cooler. In its class, there's nothing that comes even close for the price. 30 bucks, that is a pretty darn good deal. And also there was a new thermal paste, which I really am excited to try this one out. So it's been a little bit over a year since I redid all the rig and all of the GPUs in it and cleaned them and, you know, repadded it. I don't need to repad it, but I definitely want to take this chance when I take them apart because two of the GPUs definitely look to me like they have pumped out. I used two different thermal pastes in the past on that. And I definitely think that checking the new Thermal Grizzly Duro Knot is a great idea because it does say that it is very resistant to pump out. And I think for a GPU, that's gonna be one of the most impressive things if it can actually hang. There is going to be a whole video on just that. So I'm not gonna give you all the results or anything, but definitely I noticed at about nine months, two of the GPUs, the two that I had put brand kind of super common, super duper common, on definitely saw their temperatures rise quite a bit more. At first, they were very neck and neck, and there is a specific GPU-friendly thermal paste that is highly recommended, highly expensive, that I had used for the other two. So definitely, I'll have those results coming up soon. Looking at PSUs, so you want a big PSU if you're doing a big rig, of course. And there are lots of deals for mid-size ones right now, but really, are they the cheapest price? Doesn't look like it to me. However, for the really big ones, there were two that stood out to me, and one of them is just because it is a great PSU, and that is the Corsair HX 1500i that has a ton of plugs. I mean, a absolute ton of plugs. So I would consider that one very strongly, even though it is expensive. They don't seem to go below 350. From what I can see, that is kind of where they're bottom price is and that's where they go down to and that's where it is right now. So I did want to mention that one. I did find one that was a surprisingly good deal. I, I have an ASRock motherboard, but I do I have not had an ASRock power supply. Didn't know that they made power supplies, but that is the ASRock 1600 watt power supply. And that is at 250. So for that size of a power supply, that is actually a pretty darn good uh, deal. And it comes with all the cables. It comes with thermal tracking also on your PCIe ATX 3.1 for your GPU temperature monitoring. Certain GPUs are gonna have that, some of the 5090s and stuff, so you can be sure you don't burn it up. And it also comes with two of those ports, so that's really nice for your 12 volt 2x6 connectors. It does look like it has a eight additional CPU or PCIe ports after that. So that is actually a lot of GPUs you could run off of that. That, that does impress me. You know, it does look like the ASRock might have a few more features, especially these little thermal monitoring leads here. So that's what I ended up finding out there. Unfortunately, CPU, I didn't find any deals on anything aside from like nothing recent and probably nothing you're gonna go out there and buy. Like I think there was an R5 5500, which is like forever old, uh, a deal for like $60. I don't think most people are buying that generation really if you're looking at an ai rig you're probably spending a bit more money the 9600x looks like it is not at 
the price I think I paid for it was like 192, I think it's 200. So that's a little bit higher than it was in the past. RAM is in a really weird situation. I'm not gonna get fully into it, but at some point I'm gonna probably write something up on this and how you can track RAM prices. And like you can see where it's happening on the supply side. There has been many, massive contractions in the supply side. Samsung not making DDR4 also is impacting things at this time as they try to move people to DDR5. So your DDR5 prices are hanging with where they kind of have been. DDR4 currently at this moment in time is usually a little bit more expensive than your DDR5. So that is one of the things I would say, don't go out there and buy DDR4 right now for sure. Uh, definitely if you're buying DDR5, consider that most of the stuff that we see is, we're gonna see an upward price trend most likely until the beginning of quarter two in 2026. So that's a ways off. And I, I think you should definitely consider it. it's not a good time to be a buyer of DDR4, but it might be a good time to be a seller of DDR4 and if you're upgrading your system to like a DDR5 system. So those were some of the deals I found. That's not very many deals, but they are actual deals and they are actually good and they are actually related to running local AI stuff and I cannot wait to get the 9060 XT and set it up and see what kind of performance head to head we can get on the same system running either the 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte or the 9060 XT 16 gigabyte. I hope you guys have a great one. Thanks to all of our channel members and actually your channel members and all the people that buy me coffees and Patreon stuff. You're the people that bought that GPU for us that we're gonna be using. So congrats to you. And I think you'll enjoy us as we learn a little bit more about the head-to-head -head specs in comparison, how they stack up, and especially I'll be producing some written guides, which I do, you know, a lot for the NVIDIA side on that end. I'm going to do that also on the AMD side so that people can follow along with most of those guides, and it'll also help us find the things that do and do not work between them and do a really proper comparison between the NVIDIA and the AMD lineup of discrete GPUs. Everybody have a great rest of your day. If you're interested in learning more about the 5060 Ti, check out this video up here. And if you're interested in learning more about the Quad 3090 rig, you can check out the video down here.